Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're enjoying the video so far. Just wanted to take a little <laughs> bit of time to tell you about this build, a little more details than what you probably saw in the build video. Anyway, probably one of the biggest things people might want to know about is the paint. How's it holding up? What kind of paint did I use? Etc. So actually the paint so far, I've only ro rode this bike about what a week or two so far. It's looking great. This time I used Rust-Oleum 2X. So this type of paint said that it didn't need primer. And being I'm kind of lazy and kind of cheap, I thought that seemed like a great idea. So anyway, this Rust-Oleum paint went on really nice, looked good, looked really good. But I don't really think that's what made it turn out as good as it did. I think what really brought the magic to it was the clear coat. Because this isn't just any kind of normal clear coat, this was a two-part clear coat. It's uh, more of a professional type of clear coat than you would just normally get as a one-part. It's pretty expensive, $22 shipped from Amazon, but I think it's well, well worth it. And I probably will never spray paint a bike again without using this type of clear coat. It looks so much better, really makes that type of coating that you would expect. The nice thing is about the nice thing about it is it really sets a barrier between the paint and the outside elements. So if you get some grease or dirt on the paint, it just wipes right off and it looks so much more shiny. So I think yeah, the paint job on this bike definitely met and actually exceeded my expectations. You may remember the video before the build video I mentioned I wanted this to be kind of a gravel bike. Well, it is kind of a gravel bike, but it kind of isn't. The only thing that really makes it a gravel bike are the Panaracer Gravel King tires. They're 28 millimeters wide. Well, at least they're supposed to be 28 millimeters wide. I measured these out to be about 25.7 millimeters, quite a bit less than the 28 advertised. But I don't really think it's totally the fault of the tires. See, these wheels are pretty small themselves. They're only measuring 14.7 millimeters inside width. So I suspect, given a larger, wider wheel set, probably it would bring these tires out to their advertised 28 millimeters. All that being said, at just 25.7 millimeters, I don't know if you can really call this a gravel bike or not. But as you can see in the video, it doesn't stop me from taking it off-road. But it is pretty sketchy. One thing you probably won't notice because in the video I'm sitting on the saddle is I actually did change the saddle out. In the build video I was using one of these uh, imported carbon fiber saddles, solid carbon fiber saddles, which I've said in the past that I like and I do like them. But to be honest, for some reason on this particular bike, it didn't feel that comfortable. So I went ahead and put this SDG saddle on, which is more of a traditional one. It probably, I didn't weigh the difference, but it probably weighs another 50 grams, um, but it's so much more comfortable. One thing you may have noticed on the build, and you can probably see a bit in this video, is the bar tape is actually backwards. And the reason I did that is actually because a comment somebody made in one of my other videos telling me to research and look into the idea of backwards bar tape. Why would you do backwards bar tape? Well, there's just one reason, and that is to avoid having to use actual tape, like electrical tape or whatever it is in the middle, in the center section of the handlebars. And it actually works. When you wrap it from the inside out, you can pinch the bar tape itself under itself and then you don't and then you don't need any of that bar tape tape at all the other question i'm sure that's going to come up is how much does the bike cost to build and it's pretty hard for me to say because a lot of the parts well at least some of the parts i already had on hand anyway i'll go ahead and put something on the screen that's an estimate of how much the bike would cost to build assuming you do have all the tools but you don't have any of the existing parts just a, a rough estimate i'll put it on the screen now and then the final big question of course is well how does the bike actually ride i should start off by saying it is still pretty heavy even though i switched to a one by and the rims are lighter than the factory ones it's not that light overall we're at about 10.1 kilograms i guess that's around 22 pounds so compared to my Teal Schwinn, this thing feels really heavy. When you get off of the Teal Schwinn, which is I think right around 8.9 or 9 kilograms now with the pedals and everything, and you step onto this bike, this bike feels much heavier. 
And of course, that's generally not thought of as good in cycling, but it does have the advantage of feeling very solid, very reliable, no twitchiness like you get with that teal bike, especially with its carbon rims that it has now. So overall, the bike feels great to ride. Granted, I've never rode it up any kind of climb yet, so I might change my tune when that day comes. And when that day will come, because this bike is coming with me to Colorado. There should be plenty of mountains there for me to tackle with this heavy bike. So the bike handles great though. Basically these 25.7 <laughs> Gravel King tires feel really good underneath the bike. The weight of the bike feels great. The balance of the bike to me is spectacular. The drivetrain being a one by uh, one by nine is very quiet, no rattling, no clinking. I would actually say this is probably the most solid bike I've ever rode. I, I really like, enjoy riding this bike a lot. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. I'll shut up now and let you keep watching. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great day. Hey, oh, and by the way, don't forget to subscribe. Please leave me a comment. I will reply and uh, give me a like and all that stuff. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.